I'm Bird, S-U-C. I'm on a whole bunch of CDs. Long history with Screw. And, uh, but my relationship with Screw was, um, he was a partner, a partner in the beginning, but that was a big brother in the end. But that was my, that's my brother, for real. A brother from another mother. I'm gonna say like 92, because I still remember I was in high school. And it's a quick little thing. Uh, we were uh, at a Foot Locker, and a lot of people, you know, people knew Screw just, he was always undercover. I don't know if y'all ever know if anybody ever told y'all this, but Screw was always undercover. He always wanted, he said he got a tape called, I want the money, not the fame. And he ain't never really liked until later, later he like pictures, he always was behind the scenes. So I'm just saying this one little thing, I accidentally said his name in a Foot Locker. We in Foot Locker, Stick One. Stick One that's in the shop right now. Stick One used to buy a lot of people's shoes. He'll buy screws, like shoes, he'll buy me and like whatever size we wore, Stick will bring them back. And uh, like, and, and then you, you we have to try to beg him. He wouldn't take his money back. Stick would buy everybody's shoes. So this time we we in Foot Locker. He said, man, I'm gonna get a Stick a pair. So with him buying Stick a pair, he said, I'm gonna get him. He always buy my shoe. I'm gonna get him a pair. So I messed around and I said, man, you know, cause he always got screws the shoes and get my shoes. So I said, screw, what size you wear? And I made a mistake. This is what the question, what you're saying. When I knew that we, he said, man, we really hood superstars because when I said screw name in that Foot Locker, a guy say, you DJ Screw? He said, you DJ Screw, hold up. He announced it, say, DJ Screw is in here. He walked outside to the middle of the thing and said, hey, DJ Screw is in here. Well, they had some Foot Locker posters. They was, he was, people were getting Foot Locker posters, signing T-shirts, and one lady say, hey, sign my baby's shoes. He signed the shoes, and it was like 10 other women like had babies, and they was like, sign the shoes. I'm going to keep these as collectibles. So when we were leaving out, I said screw name. When we were leaving out, screw was like, man, we are really, he didn't say, he didn't think of himself because a lot of people used to come get my tapes, stick tapes, and we were like hood superstar. He said, when I drop y'all tape, everybody come, and did, did stick do one, did bird do one, did Lil D do one, but I'm going to say the year was like 92. I think it's a multiple choice question, but the thing I liked about Screw is his, uh, his style. I like Screw style because a lot of people think Screw just like, man, I've seen Screw DJ and regular, but I've seen Screw DJ on like four turntables. He was a real sure. DJ. This dude uh, like just sure, joke with us yeah, and man. DJ with his nose and sh sh Screw do with his nose and his forehead and just get on there with his elbows. And yeah, I remember him having four turntables, but one thing, his style. He asked the question, but with me, was his style. I love Screw style. I might have an answer, but I might not. But my opinion, I know like this. I came over there, and I don't. I don't even know if they were re were really gonna do a freestyle. But uh, youngster, I'm very well known. I'm no cap, but I'm very well known at Screw House. So Screw had called me and told me he say uh, Demo knew about me, but he said youngster want to meet you. So I say, man, uh, you know, I had drink, and uh, he said, man, come over here. We're gonna be in the back shooting pool, but youngster wanted, wanted to meet me. So I was like, man, I wanna meet, I, I heard a little bit about little dude, so I wanna go over there and meet him. So when I get over there, he say, man, like, you know, it's not on no day right, cause I love youngster, he's like a little brother, but he's like, man, so you bird. I'm like, yeah, I'm bird. So he say, man, we gotta do something tonight. So I, so I say, youngster, you got something? He said, I got something. And this boy youngster started going. You know, me and Key and Poke and we did a lot of freestyle. Key hard, Poke hard, but this little he was a little young, youngster. And I, I, I ain't gonna say I underestimated him, but this little dude, I say, man, let me hear something. This little dude just started riding the beat. We he, we had a different beat on. He used to riding the sucker just da, 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 come down. But he was just going hard. I say this little dude, I gave him five. I say, man, you got something, bro. So. He ended up, youngster ended up, uh, I went outside, Screw and Pat Lemon was, uh, they were shooting pool. Rest in peace, Pat Lemon. So they were out there shooting pool, so I said, Screw, we have, I have to do something with this, with this young dude. And it was, I don't know, it was just special. We got Big Mo, Pokey, me, and Demo, and, and, and other people, Hacker Joe, all in one room. I mean, we used to have a lot of people in the room. It might be me and Key, Pat. But this is a lot of people in the room. So I say, man, I say, screw, we gotta do something. And he say, man, just put on a beat. So this is what we used to do. One thing I used to love about school too, y'all, he, he had millions of records, 
and he knew what oh, yeah. every record was. When we get ready to do a tape, he'll go to the, I say, how you know what it? He'll go this 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 crate and, and get that album out and get go to this third crate and get that album out and out on the list. He knew what every album was inside of it. But back to Youngster, we, we had, we pulled out like five, five freestyle. We put them on the thing and that's how we all used to do. Me and Fat Pat, Kiki, me, Pokey, anytime we do an instrumental, we would be like, I'm gonna put one on and we all agree on it. I don't just never put one on. I say, this one we jamming. It, it might be screwing that, it might be packed. All of us, we'll be like, what y'all think about this one? We'll sit up there and be like, yeah, that's okay, put another one on. And we'll see, we'll know when it's the one. And this this is what happened with Youngster. We put that second one on, we like, mm, yeah, we're jamming, but I don't know what it was about that. Then and then, when I first put that second on, I put it on, I put it on. Put it on, we all meet, then everybody now. It was like, I wish I had the camera. I always had the camera. I promised to God I wish I had the camera right then because I see how everybody face lit up. And everybody just start freestyling in their own little thing. To me, that was like a dream. To, for everybody, we got Mo and Poe, got everybody in there. That's, that's what made it lie to me. We got all us hood superstars in there in one building. We're gonna get on this tape and that's like a dream of me. Real, but we put that sucker on that dinner and everybody just started. And I don't, know, I don't know what it is about me. This one thing I want to show before we go. Everybody used to always want me to go first. I'm really not, man. I don't feel like I'm a freestyle. I'm okay, but Key and Pat and Poke, them boys was hard. I just went in there and did it for fun. I didn't think I'm a rapper. I didn't never. I always thought I, was, I had a feeling. I said, man, I told Scruff, I said, man, I want to be behind the scenes. We do too much here, too many cars for all these shows. I want to be. And back then, I was the only camera. I want to put that out there. I started trends. I mean, I, I never told nobody this, honest to God. Back then, I was the only camera. Like, how we go on the shows and this, that, and other, and everybody, about 10 cameras and photos and everything, I was the only camera in all of those buildings back then. Me and Screw and Pat and Kiki shows, I was the one only camera. The other, the, the club people didn't even have a cameraman. I was the only cameraman. I just wanted to put that out there, man, for real. It might be good and bad, but one one memory that I have that's really that really stuck to me. I seen Screw graduate from a, I don't want to say a boy, but really a boy into a man because a lot of people don't know this, but people do know that we used to sneak to Screw House. Like 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 he had a place. He he moved from Metal, but he moved to Telephone Road. So we used to like. Screw dad told him, he was like, man, I got all these people running in and out of my house. And the neighbors would, neighbors would tell him, and Screw dad used to work overnight sometime. And uh, Screw, he, Screw told his dad he was going to slow down a little bit, but shoot, when his dad went home, he would leave like like 90 seconds or a minute or something left on the end of our tape. As me and Rick told Lil D, a couple of my people from the hood, but Toe was the first one, and Rick was the first one to turn me on the screw. But, uh, I mean, so me and Troy D, a, a close friend of mine, me and him just had, had a real close relationship with school. All of us had a relationship with me and Troy D would go over there too deep every time. We, back then, my name Lil Reggie, and they gave, they gave me the name Bird. Kiki and um, a partner Boo, and uh, they gave me the name Bird, but he, he had personally Lil Reggie and Troy D tapes. So uh, going over there, this is the memory that I'm saying, just uh, seeing uh, Screw Dad told him, he had heard about all that traffic, Screw Dad told him, hey man, you gotta go. And this was like tough love type of stuff. He said, man, you gotta go. So Screw was like, kind of like, look worried. So my partner Rick, we were over there. So Rick said, man, Screw said, man, my dad said, I gotta go because uh, I got too much traffic. So he said, he like putting me on the streets. I don't think he would have put him on the street, but Screw said he had to go. So Screw said he didn't want to stop DJing, and this is one of my most memorable moments of him. Rick said, "Man, you gonna get it? You gonna you gonna?" He, he spoke into existence. He said, "You gonna get a house?" And he said, "You were, he said you know with all us buying the tapes, this thing bread, all freestyle. You got Cino, you got Blunt, you got all these people buying tapes. You gonna pay for your house?" And he was like sitting there, and that's one of the memorable moments. Like he was like thinking, "Should I or, or can I?" And I instill something in him that my mom used to always say, you, we can do all things through Christ to strengthen us. And uh, I told him, I said, we can do all things. And I kind of put it, I'm, I ain't to my own home, but I said, we can do all things through Christ. And he listened, seeing him turn into a boy, into a man within days and weeks. He had a couple of customers, then by the month or two, this boy had lines wrapped. I know we tell it on the document, he had lines, literally, no bull crap. Honest to God, I'd be in the house, behind the door, you know, with some, you know, but I'd be making sure that, you know, 
when he say, hey, give me a three in the morning. He's like, give me a who's next to play, or give me a shine like the sun. We're running to get the tape while we watching screw back. But this dude, he first he had people come in like 11 or 12 or one, they come, come when they wanted to. He said, I have to have a set time. He said, I have to have a set time because it's getting ridiculous. The feds, like I say, the feds thought that like the- I saw that in your doc. It's in my doc, man. The police really thought that this dude was selling drugs. Mm -hmm. They thought he was selling weight. I got pulled over about, no bull crap, under the guard about 10 times leaving school house. They would, but he was, he would tell us to say, man, and it wasn't no lie. He say, tell him that I'm your DJ, but he couldn't say that he was getting money because it was like tax evasion. So he said, just tell him I'm your DJ. And, and they, they didn't pull me over, had my car looking like transformers. Got all the doors open, trunk pop, and they'll find all these tapes. And no we no nothing, no drugs. They say, man, you getting something. They'll be trying to pop our spots and everything. They say, y'all getting something from that. I say, sir, we're not getting, I told over eight to 10 laws, I say, we're not getting anything from that house. We getting number of these tapes. So they end up running in screw house. They ran in screw house and found, you know, guns, but he can have, he's older, he can have guns. They found his guns, they end up giving his guns, they had to pay for it. They shoot, searched the house, didn't find anything, took him to jail, and he just, he got out. He got out and uh, they ended up dropping the case because they didn't find anything. They just knew he had, they knew he had pounds of weed or some kind of acid or something. And we didn't have no drugs. We, didn't, we couldn't even smoke inside the schoolhouse. If anybody wanted to smoke anything, whatever, you know, whatever, but you, you could not smoke. He said, I have a feeling that the laws may run in here one day. And if they did, they're not going to find nothing on me, which they didn't. And not even the weed seed. People, you had to smoke, you had to go smoke in the, in the garage where the pool table was. He did not allow smoke in his house. None. You couldn't smoke nothing. And, Sometimes people here smoke a cigarette, a regular cigarette, but here at Al Dino, that smoke cigarette, but not weed. No weed, no drugs, no weed. That's a great question. How did it, how did the documentary come out how I wanted it? You know what I'm saying? I put in a lot of work on the DVD, by the way. I promise you, a lot of people might not know, but it was me and my friend named Pooh. He helped me, he, he, we did all the footwork. But uh, what motivated me to do it was, uh, Screw had an impact on all the rappers. And I wanted the world to know, I did an interview with Screw Mom, I still haven't put it out there yet, but Screw Mom told me, she said, um, I, I was already doing it, I was almost finished with the DVD and everything, but I said, I want the world to know about Screw. A lot of people, Ice Cube and them flew him down there, Master P, Lil Wayne, all those guys used to buy Screw tapes. Cause they, they, and they were like, man, you really putting us, we own, but you putting us out on, on the map. So why I included the people that I, had in there was because um, a lot of people like, shoot, Pimp C, Kiki, Pokey, Flip. If it weren't for God first, I give God the glory. But if it weren't for Screw, those guys really wouldn't be known as how they were. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't be known. So I wanted the world, to, you know, to know. I, the reason I did my interviews, I wanted to go back and interview these guys that Screw helped, and I wanted the world to know that if it weren't for Screw. It wouldn't be a them, it wouldn't be a me. Screw helped me out with my documentary. That helped me, push me out like a son of a gun. I was already well known, but when I dropped the doc, everybody might not. Now we got the footage with Screw and, and the world and everybody talking, but I wanted to get air do a documents on everybody that Screw helped and shoes. And uh, man, his, his gal, psh, but look there, Botany Boys, Flip, Pimp C, Bun B, everybody's on the documentary, but I wanted the world, I wanted the world to hear those guys to know, you know, what Screw meant and everything to, you know, to, to them, but I just wanted the world to know and just document those people. What's up, what's up with this B-I-R to the deep bread, S-U-C, man? And I'll be in conversation with Donnie Houston, live from Texas Theater in Dallas, Monday, June 27th, and screwed and I already warned me. You know what I'm saying? And it's powered by Denimug. Chill.